live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. And welcome back, I am John Walls, along with Paul Gillen here on theCUBE as we continue our coverage of Dell EMC World 2017. Joined by a couple of gentlemen now, it's a pleasure to welcome Ted Bardaz on the show. Ted, good to see you. Good to see you. Senior Director of Product Management for Native Hybrid Cloud and the Analytic Insights Module. That's correct. Do you have a business card long enough to hold all that on there? <laughs> Usually, yeah, I say yeah, uh, hybrid cloud platforms and that shortens it. Love it. <laughs> and uh, Craig Steele's with us as well, Craig on the far right, GM of Strategic Alliances for Pivotal. Correct. Craig, Thank you for being with us. Thank you for All right, let's talk about native hybrid cloud first. First off, how do you define that? I mean, we hear a lot about hybrid cloud and now you throw native into the mix, so go ahead and give us an idea for how that sits with you. Well, I think the, you know, the two key words really are cloud native. And then to develop cloud native applications, there's a whole set of characteristics that uh, really come along with that. One of them is elasticity, uh, microservices design, software fault tolerance, right? So there's a set of characteristics when people think about cloud native applications that are different than enterprise, typical enterprise applications, like those, those container-based stateless uh, services coming together to support cloud native applications. Okay. And then the two of you being together, I mean, uh, uh, obviously, Pivotal uh, playing a key role in this. If you would, Craig, a little bit, just shed some light on your relationship. Sure, so our relationship is, is actually twofold. We co-develop solutions to bring to market together uh, with uh, Dell Technologies and their family of companies, and then Pivotal also supports internal initiatives that are cloud-native applications being built within Dell and EMC IT. Um, from our business perspective, uh, when we think about cloud native, it's really an engagement model with end user customers. And I think our initial success has really been thinking about the outcome, the business outcome in advance, and, and approaching the solution from that perspective. So I'll give you one quick example. Um, I was watching uh, television last night trying to knock myself out after a hard day. And a commercial came on, it was a Wells Fargo commercial, and a guy left the house to take the dog for a walk, his dog for a walk, and remembered his mobile device but didn't bring his wallet. Wells Fargo has an app, a cloud native application, where you can generate a one-time pin to pull cash out of an ATM. Those are the kind of applications that are engagement model driven um, that we focus on with Pivotal. And then as we tie it together with Dell EMC, we bring that, that same philosophy where customers we see today are really focused on a multi-cloud strategy. So our position with Dell Technologies is that they can build a cloud native platform on premises, leveraging a pre-packaged solution that includes you know, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, vSphere as, as, as an IaaS as an example, and then um, hyper-converged infrastructure from Dell Technologies. We can wheel this in, have it up and running in two days, and it's as effective and efficient and, and in many ways cost effective as a public cloud offering that a customer would use to do the same thing. So that's how we partner together. There's a lot of platform as a service options out there now. Oracle has got its, its thing and Microsoft and AWS. What is the value proposition that, that draws customers to Cloud Foundry? I think it's, it's pretty simple. There are a lot of technologies that you can um, go out and learn on a public cloud provider that may take several steps to deliver what Pivotal Cloud Foundry does as a package solution. And the idea that Pivotal um, is portable, so we have partnerships with Google Cloud Platform, with Microsoft Azure, we're actually moving up the stack rank list there in terms of uh, ISV partnerships for Azure. Uh, we're also uh, on uh, Amazon Web Services, and then you know, on-prem vSphere. So I think that the fact that it's so portable and developers just have to learn sort of one thing and they can build their app anywhere is very appealing to most enterprises. And I think where NHC comes in around that as we think about uh, you know, uh, developer-ready infrastructure, right? As Craig was saying, to be able to wheel in an environment where someone on-prem can take advantage of a cloud-native platform, we wrap additional services around that to really give a full comprehensive experience. So monitoring and reporting, uh, disaster recovery, availability zones, uh, an object store. So what we do is we take Pivotal Cloud Foundry, 
we do all of the testing, we bring it on a hyper-converged infrastructure, working with uh, across VxRail, VxRack Flex, soon VxRack SDDC, and integrated also with NSX, because that's such a key component of um, of some of the virtualized networking for the segmentation that you want. We bring all of that together so that for an on-prem customer that's looking at building cloud native apps, we can get that deployed in just a couple of days and give them a very rich experience over just typical PaaS players maybe in the market that are out there that aren't really um, focused on that end-to-end -end workflow of uh, cloud native app development and really focused on how fast we can help companies deliver business value through cloud native application development. Well, we've been talking a lot about the, uh, the Azure Stack uh, offering from Dell this afternoon. Uh, does Pivotal figure into that uh, product from Dell? Yeah, so we are co-building that solution with Dell Technologies to be part of the Azure Stack story. We are, I think, the biggest consumer of Azure, PCF is the biggest consumer of Azure to date. Um, it's in, very in the world? We, ha we have the highest levels of consumption, I believe, uh, in Azure Stack with Pivotal Cloud That's Foundry. Impressive. So there are a lot of applications being written in, uh, uh, in Pivotal Cloud Foundry that are now going on Azure. And this idea that you will have that same functionality and experience on premises in an Azure Stack, and in addition to that, I mean, I, I don't want to understate the value of what the NHC solution brings to that because having the ability to include data protection, monitoring, metering, chargeback, showback, reporting, features that we don't offer as part of Pivotal Cloud Foundry, having that built into a turnkey stack on-prem, including with uh, Azure Stack when that goes GA, is something that customers are going to find really valuable. And, and I'll, I'll give you some, uh, some insight from my personal experience selling Pivotal Cloud Foundry to Dell IT as an example. Um, last year, one of the first um, sort of larger rounds that they decided to go ahead and implement for Pivotal Cloud Foundry was um, for a couple of different apps that we were going to migrate over. It took us, I want to say, much longer than we wanted to get simple vSphere clusters stood up and plugged into the network before we could do our first deployment and operations dojo. So the idea that we can expedite that whole process is uh, is very meaningful to customers and, and, and to us as well. Uh, how important is it to your customers that, that you are an open source solution? Uh, I think it's extremely important because it's almost a non-starter with some of the customers we talk to. Um, I think they all want, at the end of the day, when they see the features and functionality that you get in an enterprise solution, like Pivotal's version of Cloud Foundry, becomes super sticky and important to them. And customers are willing to pay for that. And it's supported as well, right? Um, but the fact that, you know, if they wanted to make a change, it is an open system. Um, there are a lot of people contributing, a lot of different entities contributing to the ecosystem. So new features, new functionality um, is, is continuously coming on uh, uh, as, as something that customers are looking for. So I think the ecosystem is super important to, to the, and the openness of it is super important to customers. Ted, I, I would hazard a guess that not a lot of people would think of Dell EMC as being a, a, uh, a, a cloud, you know, a, a cloud platform provider. What, what myth would you most like to explode? I'm sorry, I didn't what, 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 what myth? What so, myth? When, uh, so I think that uh, the myth I'd, I'd like to, two parts of it really. I think one of them, just from a personal anecdote, it came from you know the startup community and I targeted uh, EMC at the time because I really felt that the assets that EMC at the time had in order to really drive a lot of digital transformation and be a partner of choice for the market, made a lot of sense coming together between storage, virtualization, pivotal, security. So I was looking for an opportunity to really affect the move toward companies looking at IT moving from a cost center to really being part of the business and how they compete effectively in the digital age. 
Uh, I think the second day, so when, when Dell acquired us and that added the whole server business and gateways and IoT, then that, you know, it was just an incredibly lucky move, right, in my career that I felt to get there. So one, one myth is, you know, I think if you take a look at the assets that are out there and if you compare us to any other companies out there, I think there's few, probably less than half the fingers on one hand that compare with us in terms of the assets we bring. I think the second thing is I think Dell Technologies, and if you listen to Michael Dell being committed to leveraging technology to change the way people live in the world, the way companies compete in the world, the services, the products that they can deliver by leveraging the assets we have, that's a commitment at a cultural level that I think is very different. But your, your question is spot on. When we talk with analysts or we talk with customers, sometimes we get the response, we wouldn't have expected that from Dell, or we wouldn't have expected that from Dell EMC. But probably equally is when we get done explaining the relationship between cloud native application development, bringing on analytic insights module, which allows people to build insight driven applications. You know, we, we've had response when we've done that, we've said, oh my gosh, this really changes you from being an infrastructure provider to being a digital transformation partner. That, that happened twice to me, that to me were like drop the mic moments, like okay, you know, you're realizing the assets coming together, you're realizing the vision and the commitment to being a digital transformation partner for the economy and for the world, and then you're realizing that those coming together and how we're putting those together to really be singularly focused on helping companies deliver business value to do that is really coming through. And, and I think that's going to be a challenge for us, right? People are going to knock on the door and people aren't going to be thinking cloud native, analytics, IoT, how do you drive digital business? But uh, it's a challenge uh, we're investing in and we're willing to take on and I think we'll be able to do a, a really fine job at it. And good luck with it. Oh, thank yeah, you. Uh, a, a new challenge for you, but you've been the right guy at the right place at the right time. Sure. Nothing new for you, it sounds like, so good luck with that. Thank you very much. You bet, Ted, Craig. Thank you both for being with us here on theCUBE. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. All Back right. with more from Las Vegas. We are live at Dell EMC World 2017 from the Venetian.